It is now my great pleasure to welcome the Right Honourable David Cameron, MP. integration over uh, sort of immigration issues really. Okay, brilliant, very good question. But I think we should be in favour of greater integration. You know, all, all of us sharing these islands, living here, I think it's important that we build a strong community together and we actually concentrate on the things that we share and we try and build a common society. Rather than I think what we did a bit in the 70s and the 80s, have this view of sort of state multiculturalism, I'd call it, of keeping people in their different boxes and saying, well, of course, the British Muslim community will fund them separately and they live in this box over here and the British uh, uh, Hindu community, they're over here. And I think that was wrong. I think what we ought to be doing is making sure when people come to Britain that we um, teach English properly. If you're not, if you're not speaking the, the mother tongue, it's very difficult to be integrated into our society, to join in things like parents' evenings and all the other things that the community offers. Why has uh, Britain never interfered in Rhodesia or Zimbabwe? When is it because we installed the garbage? No, it's not what well, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, Britain did interfere, as it were, in Rhodesia because it was a, um, it was a colony. Uh, the reason I think the British government found it difficult to be more aggressive against Mugabe was, was two reasons. One is, um, that Mugabe always used Britain as the sort of imperialist power, trying to bring back white domination in rubbish, but it was an effective tool for him to beat uh, the British with and beat the press with. So I think the British were at a disadvantage. The second thing is that you do have to be careful in politics that your words can be backed up with actions. And I don't think that anyone was really thinking that Britain was somehow going to you know, what, try and change the regime through force. So what the British government's had to try and do, and I think sometimes they've been a bit weak about it, is to put pressure on Mugabe through sanctions, through um, travel bans, through 
through saying to Zadu PF and all the rest that you can't come to Britain uh, uh, and you can't come to Europe. And let's be honest, some change has now come back. Morgan Changurai is now the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe. He was imprisoned and beaten for his beliefs. He belongs to a different political party to Mugabe. He came to London recently. I had a very good meeting with him in my office. And I looked him in the eye, just as I'm looking you in the eye, and I said, you know, how are you going to cope with working with this monster Mugabe? Are you sure he's not going to double-cross you? Or, you know, and Morgan Changurai really believes that change can come about in Zimbabwe, and there will be honest elections, and in the end, Mugabe will go. In your own words, you say you need to mend broken Britain, and um, state your mind of being Dory. In the next 10 years, Britain is set to become the abortion capital of the world. Can we not see that, even in conflicting messages of say to women, you can kill this mum because you can't see it, but you need to love this child because it's born, is giving out conflicting messages to society. Well, I, I, I don't entirely agree with that. I, mean, I, I am in favour, well, I'm not, I, I, let me put it this way, I, I agree with Nadine that perhaps having a different time limit on abortion is appropriate. I, mean, I voted for uh, reduction from 22 weeks down to potentially 18 or 19 weeks. I think that is sensible because there is some evidence now that, um, that you know, fetus is born at that level could actually survive. But I'm not in favour of outlawing abortion or banning abortion. Um, it is, you're right to say that the level of abortion in Britain is, is very high and we need uh, better education and, and better birth control and everything else to try and bring it down. Uh, but I'm not in favour of getting rid of the right to abortion. I don't want us to go back to backstreet abortions and all, all the rest of it. And I don't actually see a conflict between having legal abortion but also saying to families that bringing up children is the most precious thing in the world. I hope you said that the that due to the labour spending plans, the next government is going to have to make cuts. Where, if you were to be re-elected, where would you be making cuts? Okay. Let me be clear. I, mean, I think whoever is elected, there are going to be reductions. I don't know whether you you probably got better things to do than watch Prime Minister's question. Last Wednesday. I absolutely, the Prime Minister, I asked him, you know, will you admit that your plans show capital spending falling every year between now and 2014? And the numbers are in the book. You know, it's his book. And he still won't admit that that's what's going to happen. So I think the first thing, base one, if you like, base one is to admit that we are going to have to make reductions. That's important because then everyone is prepared for what has to happen. Base two is, I think, starting to outline some of those things that, frankly, we ought to cut. I would like us to get rid of national identity cards and the identity database. I think it's a tremendous waste of money and we can do without it. I'd like us to get rid of the contact point database on which all our children's details are going to be entered. I think that it might have some uses, but I think the money could be better spent. I'd like to get rid of that. I'd like to roll up this whole regional state, the regional assemblies, many of the regional development agencies, the regional spatial strategies, regional planning. Get rid of all of that. I think that would save us a huge amount of money. I'd like to take the government advertising campaigns. <coughs> One of you probably watch a bit of TV like I do, or get up and go around the country. Railway stations are now inundated with these adverts telling us how wonderful the government is. Why are we paying for all of that? Let's cut that. The consultancy bills of government, massive. Let's get, so that's base two. I accept base three is the hardest base to reach, which is actually saying, right, now there are some things that are worthwhile, but because we are in such strange circumstances, we cannot now, that is where my party is at the moment. We are examining things like tax credits that go to um, relatively well-off families and saying, well, can we really afford that? We've got to look at all those defence contracts, things like carriers and trident, and say, can we get better value for money uh, in, in terms of these things, even though they're very, very important to our nation's defence. Now, the difference between me and Gordon Brown is I have at least reached base two, and I'm working on base three. He has not even got to base one. He's still trying to convince me <coughs> that he's going to win the election, spend lots of money, and we're all going to be happy. It's a disaster. There are questions about Afghanistan that I think should have been asked. I think there should have been, with the Mugabe question, a more broad answer regarding foreign policy that David Cameron's government would bring in.